Hey, Freedom Fighters. Welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In this video, we're going to be talking about identity theft and specifically what happens when someone tries to use your identity to get a loan. How can you first find out that that's happened? And if it has happened and some negative reference ends up on your credit report, what can you do about it? Now, you may wonder, you know, Rob, what makes you an expert on all of this? Well, I guess I'm not sure that I am an expert. I have been writing about it for a long time, but this past week, yes, I was the victim of identity theft and it showed up on my credit report. I found out about it and I dealt with it. So what I'm going to do in this video is walk through exactly how that happened. And it started with a credit card. Now, the actual attempted, I'll call it, identity theft had nothing to do with a credit card, as I'll explain in a minute. But it turns out that most major credit card issuers offer uh, free access to some version of your credit score, free access to one of your credit reports. And yes, you probably have more than one. Most of us have three from the three major uh, credit bureaus, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. They offer some sort of free access to one of those reports. And they also offer free alerts when there's a change to your credit report. And I've signed up for a number of these services. I, I track my credit through Discover, uh, American Express, Capital One, uh, Chase. It may, it may seem like overkill, although frankly, after what happened this past week, I'm glad that I do. Now, uh, it's something I highly recommend. As I said, it's free. These The credit card issuers offer this service for free. In some cases, you have to carry the credit card, but in others, you don't. For example, Discover offers this for free, whether you carry a Discover card or not. Now, in terms of a list, I actually track that on one of my websites, allcards.com. You can see this article here. I will leave a link to this article in the notes uh, in the comments below the video, but you can see we cover uh, all of the major credit card issuers. I walk through which credit score they offer. As you can see here, some offer the official FICO score, some offer uh, Vantage score. The score is important to some degree, particularly if you're in the market for buying a new home or refinancing a mortgage, you want to pay, pay particular attention to your FICO score. But in terms of uh, an alert that something has happened on your credit report. The credit score and the formula is irrelevant. What matters is which credit report is tracked. And we, we have that information here. And here's the real key. You want to make sure you have some coverage on each of the three credit bureaus. And in my case, the issue that I discovered, which I'll show you in a minute, occurred in my experience credit report, and I was I was tracking that, fortunately, but it could have been TransUnion or Equifax, and so you want to have coverage of all three credit reports. Now, in my case, the alert that I saw was actually from Capital One, and I got this in the form of an email. Now, when I get that, what I'll do is go directly to Capital One. I tend not to click the link in the email, even if, even though I may believe that it's truly from Capital One or some other uh, reputable company, I go and log directly into Capital One. And in this case, they call it CreditWise. That's just the name of their uh, credit score and, and reporting service that they offer for free. And you're looking at my actual credit report. And you can see here, there are alerts. And one of the alerts I received is what you see down here. And it said it was a new inquiry. It was reported by the U.S. Small Business Administration in September. Now, I've had no dealings with the, the SBA, the Small Business Administration, ever. So I knew immediately that this was either a mistake or fraud. And I suspected fraud because it just seemed not likely that the, the Small Business Administration would mistakenly have my Social Security number and other identifying information and put in an inquiry on the report. Now, uh, just in, in terms of understanding inquiries, uh, there are hard and soft inquiries. A hard inquiry, which is what this is, will actually lower your credit score. In some cases, it may only lower it by a few points, but depending on other factors, it can lower it by more than that. Uh, and a hard inquiry occurs when you apply for a loan. So if you apply for a credit card or a car loan or a mortgage, 
and the lender checks your credit report and score, that will show up as a hard inquiry. In contrast, soft inquiry is one that does not affect your score. And the best example of that is if you check your own credit report, just because like in this example, you want to check for fraud or just to make sure everything is correct. Uh, they call that a soft inquiry. You're not uh, applying for a loan. You're not applying for a credit card. You're just trying to make sure that you know, everything is correct. And that does not affect your credit score. But in this case, this was a hard inquiry. And you'll notice here it was reported by Experian. So what did I do? Well, the next step was, well, first of all, if I'm being honest, I, 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 I didn't freak out. That's too much of an extreme. But it was like, what? You got to be kidding me. OK, that's the first thing I did. Then I decided I wanted to actually check the official Experian credit report. And so I went to this website. And again, I'll have all of the links uh, to these resources in the, in the description below the video. But it's annualcreditreport.com. And the deal here is you can get free access to your credit report once a year from each of the three credit bureaus. You can do it all at one time. You can Some, some folks will do it once, a once every four months. They'll pick a different credit a reporting agency and check their credit report. But this is a site you go to. You've got to fill out some your information, sort of verify your identity. Uh, it only takes a couple of minutes. And then you get access to your credit report. And that's exactly what I did. And sure enough, on the official Experian credit report, uh, I found the same hard inquiry from the US Small Business Administration. Now, when I logged in, uh, to the Experian report, this is what I saw. Again, you see the US Small Business Administration, and it shows you the date the inquiry uh, was, uh, was added to my file, September of 2020. You can see the removal date. Inquiries stay on your report for two years. So this is going to stay on my report for two years. Its impact on your credit score doesn't necessarily remain the same during those entire two years. By the way, the same is true with a late payment, which will really hurt your credit score. They can stay on your report for up to seven years. They don't affect your credit score in the same way during those entire seven years, but they hurt your, your score. And, and certainly in this case, this isn't correct. It shouldn't be there. Now, the good news is you see there's contact information, including a phone number. Now, when I first saw this, I wasn't paying attention to that. And so my first step in dealing with this was to call Experian. And uh, I hunted for the phone number, called them, of course, had to wait on hold for about 15 minutes, finally spoke to someone. Now, you might be saying uh, and wondering, can't you resolve this online? Well, the short answer is no. There are some errors on your credit report that you can try to dispute online. But when it comes to this sort of uh, issue, hard inquiry, even uh, if someone actually opens a loan or account in your name, you, it's not something you're going to resolve online. So I called them. When I finally got through, explained the situation, they looked it up, they saw the hard inquiry. To my surprise, what they said was, you need to first call the Small Business Administration. And the reason is this, Experian asked me, is this fraud or a mistake? And I, you know, I said, well, I can't imagine how it would be a mistake. This has to be fraud. But honestly, I don't know. All I know is what we see on the computer screen. That's what I know. And so they said, yeah, you've got to call the Small Business Administration first, uh, confirm that it's fraud, and then call us back. And at the time, it seemed odd to me. It's like, you know, really? And, and how am I going to find someone in the Small Business Administration to help me with this? So immediately, I, I go searching for phone numbers. I find some fraud hotline. I call. They're not even taking phone calls right now. And I was pretty discouraged. I ended up coming back to what you see on the screen here. And I thought, well, there, there's a phone number. Why didn't I see that to begin with? So I called this phone number and the craziest thing happened. Someone actually answered the phone. I talked to a real human being pretty quickly. They transferred me to someone else. And this is when things kind of got scary. First of all, the folks at the Small Business Administration were wonderful. Honestly, it was probably the best interaction I've ever had with a government entity ever in my life. Incredibly helpful, uh, great to work with. But what was so frightening was they took a little bit of information from me and it became clear, uh, and that was mainly just to identify, verify who I am. They knew my social security number, my address, my name, and my date of birth, among other things. All the information they got from the person who fraudulently attempted to get a small business administration loan with my identity. Now, 
it shouldn't surprise me. The reality is most of us have probably had all of that information compromised, you know, whether we know it or not. But still, it was a little uh, unnerving to, to hear this. But he confirmed immediately that it was fraud. He said they actually rejected the loan for fraud. Now, I didn't ask this question, but my first thought was, well, if you knew it was fraud, why did you put the hard inquiry on my report in any event? He was very helpful and he said, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I've noted it as fraud in your in your file that they have for me, I guess now because of this transaction. What you now need to do is call Experian back. Basically, he confirmed exactly what Experian told me. Call Experian back and he gave me a special phone number to do that and uh, tell them all of this. And what they will do is send us a request to remove the inquiry for fraud. Our files now show that it's fraud. We will immediately respond. And he goes, you know, it's going to be off your report in 24 to 72 hours. And I thought, well, well I guess I guess we'll see. So I hung up. I called the phone number, had to go through the whole phone tree to get to a human being. It took a little bit of time, patience, but I did. And they did exactly what he said they were going to do. They sent a file. And in fact, that was just a couple of days ago. The hard inquiry is already off of my account. It's gone. So that went well, smoother than I would have imagined. Now, in my case, it was helpful that the loan was actually rejected. If they had actually given out funds to the fraudster, I'm sure there would have been a lot more hoops to jump through uh, for all of this. But to get the hard inquiry off my report, it was done in about 24 hours. Very easy to do. Now, it doesn't stop there. The next thing that Experian recommended that I do was report the identity theft with the Federal Trade Commission. Now, let me show you what uh, that looks like. Here is the website. It's actually identitytheft.gov, which is part of, as you can see, the Federal Trade Commission. Now, spending some time on this site, here is what I learned. Let me, let me tell you what I learned and then I'll show you. That if someone, like in my case, attempts to use your identity to get a loan, but doesn't actually succeed, they, they don't really treat that as identity theft. What they'll treat as identity theft is if someone is actually successful in opening up an account or getting a loan in your name. And here's why I reached that conclusion. Uh, at the website, you can see getting started and they're gonna ask you some questions. And one is, I wanna report identity theft. And they have all of these different options, right? And so one of them is loans and leases. So I thought, okay, yeah, that make, that's me. Tell us how your information was misused and you see all these options. Well, they didn't actually succeed. So no, they didn't get a car loan in my case. They didn't get a personal or business loan. They didn't get a loan, it didn't work. And so when I went back and went all the way back to the beginning and I saw this, someone has my information or tried to use it. Well, that's exactly what happened to me. And I think they had my social security number. And did you provide this to a scam artist? No, at least not to my knowledge. And did they actually use it to make a purchase or open an account? Well, not in my case. They tried to use my information. And instead of actually reporting this as identity theft, they give you a number of steps, as you can see on the screen here, of things you should do. So in my case, I didn't actually report it as identity theft with the Federal Trade Commission. However, had they succeeded in opening an account, I absolutely would have, and I think it's important to do um, for, if for no other reason. You want to make a record that someone stole your identity and used it to open a credit card, get a car loan, whatever the, the case may be, so that there's an official record, so that when you go to dispute that and say, hey, that's not my credit card, that's not my car loan, that's not my loan with the Small Business Administration, you have an official record that you've actually reported uh, the identity theft. It's kind of like reporting your car stolen so that when the bad guys use it to rob a bank, you don't you don't get blamed. Maybe I've just watched too many cop shows, but I'm pretty sure that's how, how it works. Now, this is where it, it, it didn't end here for me, but I, I, I stopped, obviously did not report this as identity theft with the Federal Trade Commission. But as you can see from this page, there are other steps you can take. One of them is putting a fraud alert on your credit file. Another is uh, put, freezing your credit. And there's even a third one that sometimes is referred to as locking your credit. Now you might say, okay, great, Rob. What are the differences between all three of those? 
It's a great question. I've done two of the three as a result of what happened this past week. And in the next video, I'm going to walk through all three, what the differences are, and how you can put a fraud alert or freeze your credit. And I think just as importantly, how you can do it for free. Until then, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Happy to respond. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.